When I do office hours for the ADHD Dude membership site, one of the most common questions that parents have is around what I call novelty-seeking behaviors. As some of you know well from your own children, the ADHD brain tends to be novelty-seeking. It likes novelty, whether that's a new toy or a new YouTube channel they watch, or the novelty can be in the form of getting an emotional reaction out of family members. So I want to give you some various examples of what novelty seeking behavior can look like in kids with ADHD. And these are all real life examples. The first one we'll talk about is John age nine. At nighttime, when John's parents would ask him to get ready for bed, he would often start acting silly and his parents would give that behavior their undivided attention and emotional reactivity. And then he would get sillier. Well, eventually it got to the point when they would ask John to go brush his teeth or take a shower. He would then run out of the house and his parents would chase him out of the house and the whole time while he was running through his development he would be turning around to make sure that they were chasing him and he would be laughing so he created a game out of this john's parents were given not helpful advice about his novelty seeking behavior they were told when he runs out of the house go chase him because he could get hurt well obviously that's what john wanted he got an emotional reaction from his parents because they would start chasing him out of the house and it became a game for him so i said to john's parents look if you want to take that advice you were given fine but expect to keep chasing him several nights a week if you want this behavior to stop you need to stop giving your attention and emotional reactivity to the novelty seeking behavior and it will stop because it will no longer be fun for john they didn't listen to my advice at first but after a month they got tired of chasing him so eventually they took my advice and of course the behavior stopped next is eric age 14. eric's parents explained when they were in the car eric would often look like he was in this kind of hypnotized state and sometimes start mumbling and saying things that were not coherent and they said is this an adhd characteristic and i said no, this is a novelty seeking behavior. And I said, how do you respond to it? And they said, well, we keep trying to snap him out and ask him what's wrong. And I said, well, think about this. When you do that, you're giving his behavior your undivided attention. He knows that you're worried. So that's a novelty to him. He likes the reaction that he's getting from you. So this is why he always does this. And my guess is he does it specifically in the car because he's bored in the car. So again, I said to them, stop giving the behavior attention and it will stop because it will no longer be a novelty to him. Well, as expected, as soon as they stop giving attention to the silly behavior, it stopped. Before I go on to the next example, I do want to mention that this novelty seeking behavior for reasons I don't understand seems to be more prevalent in girls often than it is in boys. However, it tends to look different in girls and often the way it presents in girls is not by being silly or making a game, but by getting their parents really worried about them. As an example, Ella, age 13, would often start pretending that she was having panic attacks at night. She had no history of anxiety. She had no history of panic attacks. And of course, her parents would start giving this behavior all their attention, and it would start turning into an argument eventually because they were trying to calm her down, and they were both so focused on her, you know, and she would start saying, it's not working, it's not working, and then they would go on to try the next thing. So what I had to explain to them is, what you're describing to me are not actual panic attacks. This is Ella engaging in a novel seeking behavior because maybe she wants attention at that point for whatever reason, which is fine. We have to teach kids effective ways of asking for attention. But what's happening right now is she's seeing how worked up you're getting about her behavior and how she's getting your undivided attention. And this is why this behavior continues. Interestingly, much like the first example I gave, when Ella's parents stopped giving attention to her fake panic attacks, well, then she started running out of the house and the parents started chasing her. I told her parents the same thing I told John in the first example's parents. I said, do not chase after her because if you do, what she's seeing is she's getting such an emotional reaction from you. And now this is also going to become a game. Now in Ella's case, because she was older, what I taught her parents was to go through the protocol that I teach in Scaffolding Better Behavior, the ADHD Dude Parent Behavior Training Program, which is number one, we enlist supporters, which are people who the child respects, who they would not like knowing about behavior at home. So the idea with enlisting supporters is, like in this case with the novelty seeking behavior, is that the supporter reaches out to the child and says, hey, I hear you're having a hard time right now. What can I do to help? The reason why we enlist supporters is because often kids with ADHD do not want their poor treatment of family members, or in this case, novelty seeking behaviors to be known to people outside of their house, particularly who people they respect. So when we enlist supporters, we're letting them know your behavior is no longer a family secret and people who care about you know about your behavior and they're going to reach out to you when you're struggling because they want to support you. 
the next part of this is what we call taking a firm stance or resisting the behavior. This is something the parents do not in the moment when things are heated, but outside of that, and they let the child know your behavior is not acceptable to me. I won't accept it. They don't need to say anything else but that. They just let the child know that they do not approve of the specific behavior because when you let your child know that you don't approve of a specific behavior, that can be very powerful in itself. I'm not saying that's going to stop the behavior, but it's letting your child know that you're taking a stance on this and you don't find their behavior acceptable. The next part of this is what's called the announcement. The announcement is a letter that is read to the child in which the parents talk about all the child's wonderful attributes and they let the child know that there's things that they have done in their parenting that have not been helpful to the child. So as a result, the parents are going to change their behavior. They are not asking the child to change anything. So the announcement lets the child know that things are going to be changing. And again, the child is not being asked to change. Rather, the parents are letting the child know how they're no longer going to be accommodating the behavior, which in the case of novelty seeking behaviors is giving the behavior their emotional reactivity and undivided attention. And the last part of this is enacting the plan. Now, I do tell parents often when you change your behavior in response to your child's behavior, things are going to get worse for a while before they get better. So in the case of novelty seeking behaviors, the child has to accept the fact that these behaviors no longer work for them. The last thing I suggest for families where the child is exhibiting this novelty seeking behavior is that we teach the child how to ask for attention in appropriate ways. So often I teach parents, you know, give them some lines, just say something like, you know, if you need attention, just say, can you spend some time with me? Or can we do something in five minutes? So when we give the child a specific way to ask for attention, what we're teaching them is, I don't mind giving you attention as long as you ask for it in an appropriate way. The strategies I've shared here come from two evidence-based approaches. The first one is called the nurtured heart approach, which teaches parents we give purposeful praise to the behaviors we do want. We do not give attention to the behaviors we don't want. The protocol that I roughly outlined here comes from the nonviolent resistance methodology. I hope this is helpful. Please feel free to leave any questions or comments and I will speak to you soon. Take care.